This wasn't just the highlight of Vacheron uh, Constantin, what they're showcasing this year, but it's the highlight of the entire show. Yeah. You brought the triple two back on a 37K slide. Yeah. For <laughs> us, it's, I would say, the major hit and just giving back to the story of this amazing design because yes. I, I know you are a connoisseur of aesthetics. Yes. Sandrine Dungi, a, a pleasure meeting with you. You're the Director of Marketing and Innovation at Vacheron, and that is some very, very big shoes to fill. Yes, it's, it's a chance, uh, uh, Rida, I'm sure. Um, it's uh, the fourth year I'm working at Vacheron Constantin uh, as a Marketing Director and Innovation, and I'm fully involved in all the reflection about development of new creations with my colleagues from the design teams, from the engineers, right. uh, the watchmakers, and uh, it's a pleasure and uh, I will say a tribute uh, to pay legacy to this heritage, and I'm working in the watchmaking industry for more than 15 years now. Oh, wow. Mm. Um, and you overarch basically everything that's to do with the context of marketing, innovation, where is the brand? now where is the brand headed and uh, let me just reward you for some of your efforts even before without even having really you know what you have done to get to that level but um, Vacheron had picked up in the past two years and we're not just talking about the overseas um, so so tell me what had what had changed in that direction how did you guys arrive to suddenly this this demand across a lot of a lot of your model lines of course and uh, it's a chance because we have an inter uninterrupted uh, production since uh, se uh, 70 uh, 55, 55 and that's true that since this date uh, we have perpetuate innovation, but recently you mentioned uh, we have really injected this kind of rejuvenation yeah. in our campaigns with the one of not many uh, visual language, but also on the product, of course, because I'm a person from the yeah. marketing. So I will talk like that we have also, um, I would say, introduced new aesthetics, also paying uh, tribute to our past. Yeah. Uh, we made innovation. We introduced the Twin Beak in 2019 yes. with the famous uh, perpetuate to El Calambar, uh, course, where yes. you can just have uh, the opportunity to change the system with the different frequencies. Yes. So it's a perpetuation of, uh, I would say, the balance between the past and the present. And yes. it's, uh, it's a tribute to all this uh, legacy. Absolutely. Well, well done, I got to tell you. And uh, the experience as a customer of Vacheron before being uh, a content creator, uh, it is the warmest purchase experience. It is the most knowledgeable on-site teams that you have, uh, even the way they share some of these stories. And I feel like uh, when you continue that way, your success is only awaiting you, uh, even bigger success. Mm -hmm. uh, but coming back again to the context of innovation, and, and I don't know if this is a theme I'm picking up or not, but some of your novelties uh, that were showcased at Watches and Wonders 2022 mm -hmm. um, are skeletonized, yeah? And if it's not, it's open worked. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. I know we have a few interesting models, but let's start with why did you decide to skeletonize? Maybe coming back again, uh, it's a, a balance between the past and the present. Skeletonized approach is something that is deeply in our roots since the 20s. At the time, we had pocket watches, Art Deco pocket watches, already up and worked yes. uh, with the skeletonized caliber. Uh, and we had another gap in our uh, history up to the 60s. Yes. And at that time, we had also skeletonized wrist watches but with much more traditional approach with engraving yeah. a facet of the bridges and the plates. Yeah. And I would say here it's just another way to reinterpret interpret this approach, yeah. but with a modern contemporary approach with knack treatment, uh, different decor and finishes. Yes. And here we are, we have introduced with the Twin Beat in yeah. 2019, uh, this knack treatment. And we have also extended this approach to the overseas perpetual calendar that right. uh, has won the Grand Prix de l'Horlogerie of uh, Geneva in the calendar category. Yes. And you have this kind of same finishing, but very modern treatment. So yes. it's keep keeping the innovation approach, but yes. deeply rooted with our heritage, I yes. would say. It's the way we can uh, 
pay with the, bo the, the two facets. Absolutely, mm -hmm. well said and, and, and really tangibly felt as well at the same time because I've tried this watch a little while ago outside and mm -hmm. you know, for me, the way that Vacheron had played with depth in the skeletonized dial mm -hmm. is absolutely unbelievable. Uh, and I feel it even adds to the sportier element of, of the watch itself. I'm an aesthetic drawn person, so I like, I like I mean, sure, complications, but, but first and foremost, it would be the look and feel of the watch. And, and this absolutely sits well, it tapers well, the skeletonized dial as well. But then you married also uh, this playful uh, component mm. to some of your classic watches. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have the watch today, but this is the traditional open work. Yeah, the complete calendar that we introduced last uh, December. Yeah. Yes, of course, it's the same spirit in terms of traditional, but with modernized codes. And I completely agree with, you, with your comments on the skeletonized caliber. And especially here, it's based on the 2160 skeleton uh, version of the regular uh, peripheral tourbillon base. And that time, the engineer, the watchmaker, the designer have completely uh, reimagined the structure of the bridges in order to maximize maximize the aperture yeah. of the different, uh, I would say, bridges and its innovation at that time because it's Absolutely. taking the basics but just thinking differently to give birth to another approach, uh, keeping the skeletonized um, at its best, uh, rooted in yeah. our history since yeah. I was in the, the 20s. No, 100%. This is this is absolutely correct. And you managed to take mm. that. You, you took your roots mm. and you've modernized them yeah. and you attributed basically a collection for what it is. So when you talk about sport, mm. the missing variations is that, um, OK, the open work. So we talked about that. Mm. But then again, the 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 experimentation with different materials yeah. outside of white gold and rose gold and yellow gold. Yeah. I believe this is actually in titanium. Exactly. This is uh, the first time we introduced the full titanium yeah. uh, grade, f grade 5 in yeah. this overseas uh, yeah. number 3, I will say. It's uh, yeah. the third generation. Yeah. First time we have a, an, an integration of the metal bracelet with a, mm. um, a titanium case. And we are really proud because it's a lighter material yeah. uh, in terms of um, I would say anti-allergenic properties uh, in terms of reliability, scratch re resistance. Yeah, it's a course. very appropriate uh, yeah. material, yeah. and especially in the sports segment, I would yeah. say. And I think mm. also the attribute of when you, I, I, back in my days, I used to associate uh, um, rich with heavy. Yeah. I used to say, if I don't feel it on my wrist, <laughs> Then it's not, you know, but but here you're changing mindset, you're changing that perception. You're saying, you know, it could be also light, so yes. it gives you that additional comfort, uh, corrosion resistant, but also the fact that titanium is more scratch resistant than any of the other metals, so 100%. Exactly. And then I, I peek on the corner. Mm. To me, when I look at watches and wonders, I say this wasn't just the highlight of Vacheron. Uh, Constantin, what they're showcasing this year, but it's the highlight of the entire show. Yeah. You brought the triple two back on a 37K size. Yeah. For <laughs> us, it's, I would say, the major hit and just giving back to the story of this amazing design because yes. I, I know you are connoisseurs of aesthetics. Yes. Um, this is a collection that we had in our portfolio since uh, 1977. Yeah. The collection itself was composed of different families, yeah. uh, different sizes, but the most popular one was the 37 millimeter Jumbo one. Yes. And we are completely in the legacy. We have kept maximum of element in terms of design on aesthetics yeah. while I would say uh, thinking about the comfort of our clientele sure. um, in the design of the, the bracelet but also changing the caliber. Uh, we have replaced the famous 1121 uh, with the new caliber 2455, right. which offers a better readability with the date. Uh, you yeah. have three uh, position for the crown. Yeah. It's a uh, three-part uh, three construction for the case. And we have also better precision which is also fitting with yeah. nowadays expectation of our clientele. Yeah. And we have improved some slight uh, elements, such as the link uh, between uh, the different elements of the bracelet, and also added a folding claps with three um, a triple folding claps, yeah. which is easy uh, to manipulate for the clientele and perfect for daily, daily wear. Yeah. And you can see it's really a tribute to our past 
very faithful to what we have uh, in our legacy. That is, I mean, well said, and what can I say? Uh, if I can come out of the context a little bit and tell you, if you ask me personally, outside of everything historical that you mentioned, every, every step you've taken toward modernization, what is really, really, really super interesting to you, Rida, in this specific watch, is that I would say if you put the watch basically down, mm. it would actually, if you place it like that, um, I just like the way it sits. Right. <laughs> um, I, I really do. So, of course, let's, let's go back a little bit and maybe add some context. So, yeah. you're definitely in the ultra thin uh, mm -hmm. sport segment here. And I know the roots of what had happened with the 222 mm -hmm. had gone different, different places. Mm -hmm. But you brought it back. You basically said, you know, we've got, we've got the classics, we've got the overseas, yeah. we've got different materials, we've got skeletonized dolls. Mm -hmm. And now we brought the 222 back. I fully, so, fully agree. It's uh, yeah. for me the, the perfect expression of uh, sport chic, elegant yeah. timepieces. Yeah. And it's what we say it's a true Vacheron Constantin because sure. it's a best bridge between the sports and the elegant timepieces. And it's our history yeah. collection, meaning that we keep uh, the main uh, design attributes, but injecting some modern hints yeah. uh, with the new caliber. Yeah. But I also agree that it's uh, a good bridge because it comes in yellow gold, yeah. because at the time the jumbo existed um, in yellow gold, yeah. and it's a, a, a new uh, material. We we have a majority of pink gold in other collections, right. and it's also the That's opportunity. N18, right? It's uh, it's a uh, 3N, 3N18, 3N18, yeah. And uh, the thinness of uh, the metal bracelets, uh, which is perfectly uh, connected to yeah. what we used to have in the past, Absolutely. is also a key design attribute of this uh, timepiece for yeah, sure. For, for me, tell me. Fin, let me tell you, it's a human adventure about uh, speaking about this watch because it was really uh, a point about what do we have in our archives, what is the best model, what do we keep, what do we improve, and it was really a step-by-step -step, uh, work we did with the creation, the designers, the watchmakers, just to make sure that we keep the spirit, but still in 2022. Okay. So it's yeah. something that we, we went step-by-step -step and make sure that you don't want to yeah. see an historical yeah. timepiece. You want to see a rejuvenation of an icon. Yeah. And at the first glance, you see, oh, it's a vintage one, but not. Uh, finally, it's a new one because yeah. we have kept, I would say, nowadays attributes while keeping really the thinness yeah. of the case and the bracelet. I really like the approach. And while this, mm. some might think it's minimal, uh, let me mm. just correct that thinking because um, when something is already very good, you don't want mm. to touch it. You don't want to change anything. You want to keep it as it is, right? Uh, mm. But yet you found a, you found basically the curve the, mm. to take uh, to add a few touches and still make it uh, speak to today, right? Mm. So that's 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 very interesting. Yeah. And we have kept the attributes such as the Maltese cross on, yeah. the, on, the, on the shape, yes, uh, the fluted crown, uh, the fluted, sorry, um, bezel, uh, which is also on the back of the oscillating weight yeah. uh, in 22 uh, carat gold. Yeah. Um, and the golden dial with yeah. uh, the indexes, riveted indexes with uh, Superluminova, yeah. all the key elements that a yeah. coin will please uh, when looking at this one. And the other